Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky. I'm Hayley and this week I'm going to be talking about the very exciting comic Neo-Wise, Saturn reaching opposition and the constellation of Hercules the hero. Let's begin by taking a look at the comet that everybody has been talking about over the last couple of weeks. You may have been lucky enough to spot it yourself already, but if you haven't, then this week should hopefully still present a good opportunity to seek it out in the northern sky. The way to do that is to seek out our familiar asterism of the Big Dipper. And at the moment I'm on Monday, the 20th of July, at around 11 o'clock. So on Monday, once you've found the Big Dipper, look below and slightly to the right, and you should see Comet Neowise. And comets are notoriously unpredictable when it comes to their brightness and um, Neowise has been a fantastic naked eye comet so far and hopefully this week you will still be able to see it with your naked eye. As we go through the week the comet is gaining altitude so it will be a little bit higher each night and I'll just show you that so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and so on but it will be dimming now. Um, it has passed its closest approach to the sun already and it's going to make its closest approach to Earth on Tuesday. So now is the time to try and spot this comet before it becomes so dim that you can't see it with the naked eye anymore. Um, if you have a pair of binoculars, you could try enhancing your view with those. Um, Certainly, if you're struggling to make out much of the tail and you put a pair of binoculars onto the comet, then that should help you to pick out the comet's tail. Comet Neowise is named after the mission that discovered it. So, um, Neowise is short for Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer which is a bit of a mouthful, which is why it's shortened to Neowise. Uh, and it's a telescope in orbit around the Earth. And the telescope spends its time looking for near-Earth objects, such as comets and asteroids. Comets themselves are often referred to as dirty snowballs, um, and they are thought to be left over from the formation of the solar system. Um, and excitingly, they may have delivered the water and organic, organic molecules that led to life on the Earth. Um, in the distant past, people often found comets quite alarming. Um, they were referred to by some as long-haired stars that suddenly appeared in the night sky. Looking at the structure of the comet, you can see that it's made up of a bright central core or uh, sometimes called the nucleus, which is made of ice and dust and frozen gases. And when the comet gets close to the sun, the ice begins turning into a gas, and that forms an atmosphere around the comet, which is called the coma. And you can see that comet Neowise has two tails, and that's because radiation from the sun pushes dust away from the comet, forming a dust tail, and charged particles from the sun cause some of the gases in the comet to ionize and that forms what we call the ion tail and both of those tails point away from the sun. This particular comet, if you don't manage to spot it this week um, or you don't manage to spot it before it gets too dim to see with the naked eye, you'll have another opportunity in about 7,000 years. Um, so none of us are going to be around then uh, and I wonder who will be around to look at Comet Neowise when it comes around again. So let's zoom out now and take a look at what's happening with the moon this week. So if we go back to Monday, and I'm just going to go back to daylight. So we are just after 9pm now. And if we look close to the sun, you'll see the moon is very close to the sun and the phase is new so we have a new moon on Monday so there will be no moon spotting on Monday. As we go through the week the moon will become a waxing crescent and that crescent will um, get larger as we go through the week and the moon will get higher and further away from the sun and to show that if I go to 
I'm going to go back to 9pm, zoom out a little bit and just show you through the week. So Monday we now can't see the moon at 9pm. Um, Tuesday you can see that the moon is a little higher. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, follow it round, Saturday, Sunday. So if you want to do some moon spotting this week, then you're going to be better off towards the end of the week because you're going to have more of a, an opportunity to see it when the night is already dark. If we take a look at the phase, if I go back to Tuesday and zoom in, you'll see we've got a really thin crescent on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And that's actually quite good news if you're comet spotting this week because a moon that is full or nearly full provides a huge amount of light and that it's not good if you're trying to spot things that are relatively faint. So it's, it's quite good that the moon is um, new or crescent this week. Let's look at the planets now. So I'm going to go back again to Monday and I'm going to go to around midnight. And here we have the familiar Jupiter and Saturn and Mars just rising in the east. And last week we talked about Jupiter being at opposition. And on Monday this week, Saturn is going to be at opposition. So it's the turn of Saturn this week. And if we zoom in and take a look at Saturn. And as we discussed with Jupiter, being at opposition means that Saturn will be at its maximum diameter and shine at its maximum brightness for this year, which is the perfect opportunity to go and have a look for it um, alongside Jupiter with your naked eye. Or if you have a small telescope, then you could try taking a look at Saturn's ring system, which um, the angle of the rings at the moment is pretty good for observing. And you can also have a go at spotting, if I zoom out a little bit, Saturn's bright moon Titan. And then staying with the planets, if I just zoom out and take us into the morning. So we're at midnight at the moment, one o'clock, two o'clock going into the morning and here we are around 4am and I just want to mention Venus because Venus is nice and bright at the moment in the early morning sky so if you can get up nice and early before the sun comes up and take a look at Venus currently in the constellation of Taurus and if you have a small telescope currently showing a crescent phase as well nice bright morning object in Venus at the moment. Let's take a look at our constellation of the week now. So I'm going to go back to the dark part of the night or the darkest part of the night at the moment and I thought we would talk about Hercules this week having talked about Draco the dragon last week and mentioned Hercules I thought we could carry on the story this week. So here we have Draco the dragon and here we have Hercules the hero and if you want to try and spot Hercules um, none of the stars in Hercules are especially bright so um, a good way to do that is to find some bright stars and use those as pointers uh, so starting from the Big Dipper which I like to start there whenever we can because it tends to be the easiest thing to spot um, find the Big Dipper's handle follow the arc of the Big Dipper to Arcturus um, in Boötes and then if you have found Arcturus if you can also find the bright star Vega in Lyra and connect the two they will take you through the constellation of Hercules and if we put the art on you can see Hercules here depicted next to the dragon and Hercules is a son of Zeus and was known as the greatest hero among the gods and he was driven mad by the jealousy of Hera, queen of the gods and as a result committed horrible crimes 
and when his sanity returned, he wished to find redemption and was tasked with completing 12 labours, which included the slaying of an invulnerable lion, which was terrorising people nearby. And when Hercules was triumphant, the lion was placed into the night sky along with Hercules. And that lion is known as the constellation of Leo. Other tasks included destroying the multi-headed monster Hydra and, of course, slaying the dragon of Draco. And Hercules is often depicted in the night sky with his foot on the dragon's head as he is here. Let's finish by taking a quick look at the International Space Station. So, as has been the case in recent weeks, there are quite a few opportunities this week to spot the station. And I'm going to give you one example, which occurs on Tuesday the 21st at around 11.16pm. So let's go to 11.15 on Tuesday the 21st. And you can already see it coming into view, actually. And the ISS will take around six minutes to cross the sky so should be a long enough opportunity for you to spot it and track it if the skies are clear and as always if you want to find out a full list of ISS passes where you are then you can visit the NASA spot the station website Thanks for listening and I will be back again with another episode of What's in the Night Sky next week.